Israel has been on the precipice before. On Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar, Egypt sends its Soviet-equipped troops slashing into Israel. October 1973, the young nation is caught off guard. Fifty years ago, Israel suffered a terrible surprise attack from Syria and Egypt. The leadership had totally misjudged the strategic situation. It was also responsible for the military, which had misjudged the situation. It ended the career of Prime Minister Golda Meir. In October 2023, another terrible surprise attack from an enemy that had been underestimated. I mean, they could not, they, they could not imagine Hamas executing such a, 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 a large-scale operation, well-coordinated, well-synchronized. Uh, professionally talking, very well executed, uh, using almost every trick in the arsenal. The man at the helm during this catastrophe has so far survived, but he has not admitted any fault. Benjamin Netanyahu looks forward, not back. His personality has, and, and his goals, and his um, hunger for power, and his, most of all, his ability to market himself, even if not to govern, has shaped Israeli politics since the 1990s. The dominant issue of his time, Palestinian demands for their own state. It would cause great political pain in Israel. 150 protesters took a last stand on the roof of the synagogue of the Gaza's oldest settlement, Kfar Dorom. This was 2005, as the last Israeli settlers in Gaza were evicted by their government. 1,500 people chanted Jews do not expel Jews as the might of the Jewish state did just that. Mr Netanyahu has avoided these agonies in the West Bank. His policies supporting settlers, despite their acts of violence, have weakened the Palestinian Authority and strengthened the power of its rival, Hamas, in Gaza. He also developed this idea that, that Hamas might be um, a good strategic choice because then you don't have to deal with the Palestinian Authority, or at least you, you keep the Palestinian divided. Through three stints as Prime Minister, totalling more than 16 years, Mr Netanyahu's message was constant. He will keep Israelis safe. The threat of Palestinian terrorism, and specifically the threat from Gaza, were constant elements in creating the atmosphere of fear that he exploited to be re-elected over and over again. In 2011, Mr Netanyahu approved a deal with Hamas to swap captured Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit for more than 1,000 Palestinian prisoners. It has been cited since then as one of the measures that greatly strengthened Hamas in Gaza. Of all the bad decisions he made, you could probably say that that was the one that had the greatest public support and understandable public support. He forged a tight bond with Donald Trump. We have a strong free economy because we have a strong military because we have a strong relationship with the President of the United States and the American people. That culminated with the US shifting its embassy to Jerusalem to the fury of Palestinians. He signed agreements with two Gulf Arab states. He uh, improved Israel's security. Uh, through many, many different ways. Also, also through, you know, uh, diplomatic breakthroughs like, like the Abraham Accord, uh, which, which secured Israel um, and gave it um, a better national, better national security, improved its national security. But in the last uh, year and a half, I, I couldn't understand where he's going. I think that the character arc that we see that has uh, changed or become more extreme over the years is 
first of all, the um, rising pattern of alleged corruption for which he is on trial, uh, misuse of power. Facing corruption charges over allegations that he accepted hundreds of thousands of dollars in gifts from businessmen, including Australia's James Packer, Mr Netanyahu won power at the last election by shifting to the right. He brought ultra-conservatives into his cabinet, expanded West Bank settlements and introduced new laws to curtail the power of the courts. And this proposed change produced the largest protest movement in, uh, in the country's history. It has caused problems within the nation's military. There was the, the reservists who said, we're not going to, 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 uh, to report to our reserve duty. Uh, there were already parents who were saying, you know, our kids who are going now to, 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 uh, to enlist, uh, we're not going to, to send them. All this, the rise of Hamas, a distracted military, problems in the West Bank, a government under siege, coalesced on October 7. After Israel was attacked in 1973, it took seven months for public opinion to force out Golda Meir. Netanyahu is obviously very aware of that precedent and is trying to avoid it, but his attempts to assign blame to everybody but himself have only amplified and uh, accelerated uh, public dissatisfaction and anger. One month since his catastrophe, Mr Netanyahu is digging in, in his own job and in Gaza. I think Israel will, for uh, an indefinite period, will have the overall uh, security responsibility because we've seen what happens when we don't have it. Many Israelis want him gone now. Government is not Clearly he should step down for the sake of the state of Israel and Israeli democracy. Whether it will happen, you know, he's, a, he's known to be a magician. Uh, whether there are more rabbits in his head, I don't know. 